Hi, welcome to Life's Connections. I'm Mark. Our goal here is to use scripture to answer questions that you may have. Our question tonight is a simple one. The question is, what is faith? But before I start answering that, I want to tell you a rather silly story. Several years ago, I was at my friend's house. I believe they were hosting a game night, so there were a number of us there. So we needed to use a lot of chairs, and they had an old dinette set that they'd been given, and it wasn't a great dinette set, but hey, if you're given something for free, you find use of it. Hit a table, some old chairs. And the chair I was sitting on was making some creaking noises, which it normally did. If you've watched a number of these videos, you notice that I'm not exactly a skinny guy, so sometimes chairs creak. Well, it so happened that after a while, this chair creaked a little more loudly. And suddenly, I wasn't sitting in the chair. I was sitting on the floor in the pile of kindling that used to be the chair. You may be wondering, why am I telling you this silly story that's somewhat self-deprecating? Okay, it's a lot self-deprecating. I'm telling you this story to use an example of this word faith. See, when I sat down in that chair, I didn't give it a lot of thought. But what I was doing was putting my faith in that chair. I placed my faith in that chair to hold me. Just like right now, I'm placing my faith in this stool to hold me. I hope this stool's a little better than that chair. But when I placed my faith in that chair several years ago at my friend's house, that faith didn't do me any good. I had misplaced my faith. The reason I'm telling you this is as we look at defining faith today, the first point I want to make is faith is only as good as the object in which it is placed. My faith was fully placed in that chair, and that did me no good. I ended up sitting on the floor. You could place your faith fully in the idea that 2 plus 2 equals 5, but when you sit down with your math exam, you're not going to do too well. I'm afraid that won't work out too well. So what is faith? What is faith according to the Scriptures? We're going to start out by looking in the book of Hebrews. So let's grab our Bibles here, and we'll go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 1. We'll start there, and we read, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So what is that? The assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. There's another word in there we need to talk about, hope. Hope is a word that we use a little differently in our daily speech than the way the Bible uses it. You might say, I hope my favorite football team wins tonight, or whatever your favorite sport is, or I hope it doesn't rain because I want to go on a picnic. That hope it's just that we're hoping, but it might happen, it might not. When we talk about biblical hope, we talk about a certainty, something we're looking forward to, something we're anticipating. It's not just something that we hope and it may happen and it may not happen, but it's something that we're certain will happen. So this tells us faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It's the proof that something is going to happen, that we're expecting, that we're looking forward to. How is faith the proof? Well, remember that story I told you just a couple minutes ago about placing my faith in a chair that apparently wasn't up to holding my weight. Faith is only as good as the object in which it is placed. The reason biblical faith can be the assurance of things hoped for is because we place our faith in God. When we place our faith in God, when God is the object of our faith, we can be sure that chair is not going to crumble beneath us. There are some people who place their faith in the idea that the world is flat. No matter how much they place their faith in that, they're going to be wrong. The world is round. But when I place my faith in God, I can be assured, I can be convinced that whatever I place my faith in Him will be right, will be true. And so it's the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We kind of build on that same idea in the next verse that we're going to look at. We're going to flip to 2 Corinthians. In the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7, just a very short verse here. Paul writes, and he writes, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Now that's kind of an interesting thought, because if we think of just normally walking around, looking down, looking where my feet are going, looking ahead, I walk by sight. 
Blind people learn how to walk a little bit differently. Some, to some extent, they walk by faith, but that's only when they know for sure what's in front of them. Most time you'll see them carrying a cane or they'll have a guide dog. There'll be something helping them out there because in a sense, they're still walking by sight. It's just somebody else's sight. Something has been built for them and an animal seeing for them. Paul tells us we walk by faith, not by sight. Why is this? Because we've placed our faith in things that we don't see. Do you see God? No, I don't see God. I see the things he's done. I see the creation he's made. I see the other people he's brought into my life. I see the truth of the scripture, but I can't actually physically see God. There are things I can't see, but I trust that they're there. When we think about this, we do this in our everyday lives. How many of you have been to Africa? Probably most of you hearing me talk have never been to Africa, but I'll bet you trust that it's there. I'll bet you have faith that that whole continent is there. Why? Because you've seen other evidence of it. You've been given evidence of it. So you have that faith. That faith is certain because of the assurance of what you hope for, the assurance of what you know. So Paul says we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk according to a God who we do not see, but it's a God that we know. Let's just look at one final verse here before we wrap up, or to be correct, two verses. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. In these we read, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. We've kind of defined faith in the first couple verses we looked at as being the assurance of things that we haven't seen. Now we're looking at faith from a very practical perspective regarding salvation. We have been saved through faith, and this is Paul writing again here in Ephesians. We've been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. I'm not sitting here telling you, you know what you need to be saved? You need more faith. It's a gift from God. You want to be saved? You want to have faith? You request that from God. God promises. He gives us good gifts. He gives us what we need. He gives us what we ask for. And so when we ask the question, what is faith? And we look at these verses. Faith is through God what saves us. And that's what makes faith so important. Because if this is true, for by grace you have been saved through faith, then without faith we can't be saved. In fact, another Bible verse says that without faith it is impossible to please God. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to please God? I hope you do. I trust that you do. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you as we've just for a few minutes looked at these brief verses and there's so much else we could look at, but we're reminded that we need to walk by faith and not by sight. Because when we think about it, there's so much that we don't see or there's so much that we see and don't understand in every walk of life. But we can trust in you. You are not a chair that will crumble under us. You are strong. You are sturdy. You are secure and steadfast. And you will not fail. We thank you that you are a God in whom we can place our faith. And God, if there is one listening to my voice who does not have that gift of faith, I pray that that one would bow his head and ask you for that and be saved today. We ask it in the precious name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. We're here every week, Thursday at 9 p.m. Next week, we're going to be looking at the question, what is the Trinity? I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll subscribe. That opportunity will be coming up on your screen in just a few seconds. And until next time, keep walking on the well-lit path.